Welcome to November 22nd and a yet another release of Onshape. Um, it's been minutes since we just deployed the new release. So, and there's something in here that's so exciting that I, I needed to get onto it right away. And that, of course, uh, is the, the highlight of the release you can see here in the What's New is um, flattened surfaces. So Neil did a great job introducing it. And I just want to go into a couple more things in a little bit more detail. I'll take you through a series of examples, starting with some simple, well, it's all pretty simple. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll show you some different um, tips and tricks with it. So let's start with a snack. Uh, this potato chip here is a uh, non-developable surface. Uh, it's got curvature in a couple of directions. Uh, but that is no hassle uh, to to flatten. So you just choose the flatten from the uh, analysis tools, choose the face that you want to flatten, and there it is. Now, first tip here, um, if you want to, it's going to flatten it to the XY axis at the origin, right? So you can see where the origin is there by default. You don't need to pick any vertices. Um, I'll show you some of these things in a minute, but you can actually just offset the result. It's not actually changing uh, the flatness, just a display technique to show um, where that is. Uh, pretty useful if it's sort of hiding inside there like this one. Um, maybe go through this bit really easily quickly at the start here. Um, if you want to export it to Parasol, STL, DXF or SVG then you can do that here. Uh, maybe as a Parasol let's export it and it's done. Um, you can bring it back in, make a drawing of it, uh, use it in another model, whatever you like. Uh, so those those formats are handy for that. Right, so um, that's the very first one, and I'll show you some more things on the next. But before we do that, I've got the really big tip for you, and that is to go to your account preferences and make yourself a shortcut for it, because you're going to be loving this so much that you want to be using this over and over again. So I've already created a shortcut to it, um, and I'm using the X key because the X looks like a squashed something. Um, so that's my uh, shortcut. And, you know, incidentally, you can put shortcuts basically on everything now. If you want a draft analysis one, you can do that. Um, yeah, zebra stripes, going in and into and out of perspective mode. All of these things are things that I've done now. Um, so, you know, I can go into our perspective mode. I can turn on my zebra stripes and indeed I can just hit the, the X key and go straight into this flatten. It's an extremely fast way to get your workflows going. All right, next one. Uh, this is part of a fender of a car. Uh, and this happens to be yeah, again, not something that you could do in a rolling operation. Uh, it's not a developable surface. You see, it's, again, it's got curvature in, in different directions. Um, so we hit the X key. Choose the face that we wish to flatten. Now, it could be all of them. Uh, it could be some of them. Um, the use case here is something like I want to put some paint protection film, some kind of polymer, sticky polymer, over it to keep uh, rock chips and other things away. Um, so I want to know what the cut sheet flat would look like. Um, so I choose these surfaces. This is the ones I want to cover. Uh, and again, just hit the flatten button and it's, it's you know, pretty fast like that. So, oh, instant in this case. So if we want to reposition this a little bit more explicitly, I can choose an origin and you choose one of these vertices on the original part and then flatten there. And you see how it's actually going to go at tangent to that um, the surface, uh, the, yeah, at that where that vertex is, uh, it doesn't change the result. Uh, it's, it's purely a sort of a graphical, handy way of doing things. So you can, you know, you choose wherever you like uh, to do those uh, to do those things. It doesn't change where the export uh, the export is going to be done at the origin anyway. So that is useful. Now, the next sorts of controls that you might want to look at in here are these ones here. So the checkerboard, the checkerboard, and we can change the, the scale on the checkerboard. And it gives you a from and a to, or kind of a before and after look. So in the flat here, you'll see that the thing, the grid is purely orthogonal, like a checkerboard. Uh, but when it comes over to the formed, uh, face, 
you can see how the curvature starts to to uh, to be more evident. Now, again, it's a graphical thing. It's a visual guide as to see where the distortion is. Um, and there's some other models down here that I'll show you that, that show that a little bit differently, uh, or probably more importantly um, for those ones. There is a control to show distortion where we're showing a contour plot where the blue and the red represent, uh, red represent kind of crinkling um, and compression, and blue represents tension and thinning or potentially uh, tearing. Uh, so you see how if I start with this flat here, this curve on the flat has to make its way onto that curve there. And in doing so, it actually has to compress itself around this corner. Imagine yourself wrapping a birthday present that's a funny shape. Uh, and if you can't fold it so much easily, you're going to have to do some uh, darts and, and, and folding and, and uh, crinkling to, to get the paper around the present. Kind of what's going on here. Um, let's look at something else now. This is a really easy one. And I've, one of my favorite models, my balsa wood uh, radio control glider, now, what people have been asking me for, I can provide, which is the ability to take these pieces uh, directly off the model and create a flat um, flat of them. So you can see here, I've just chosen that side panel. It's formed again. It's not going to be something that can be uh, developable. Um, so I can't use a sheet metal approach or anything like that. I need to, to flatten it. And that is very, very easy there. So I'm going to unhide a mate connector and show you this next thing. And that's the ability to position this flattened result using some kind of mate connector as the reference. So instead of going from the model origin, which is back here, uh, it's actually sort of shifting itself uh, relative to that. Just a handy way to, uh, to show things. Uh, if you don't want it there, you don't have to. Um, you don't have to do that. Now you can um, you just very easily flip between these faces. You can see this one on the bottom now uh, is flat as well. So uh, making patterns for this to be cut out of my laser cutter uh, is going to be a breeze. Now, next one this is a really simple one, but just showing you for some of the mathematicians out there, a ruled surface, which is like this, um, is by definition developable. And of course, we can use flattened um, flatten surface on developable surfaces as well. Uh, so I choose the surface and flatten it, and there it is. Um, all right, so that is uh, just showing you how the difference there. If I put distortion on and try and turn up the scale very, very high and keep going, it's not ever going to show me any colors uh, because there is no distortion by definition. And along this line, um, this is another one that has no distortion, but a very fun and interesting one. So these two pipes, uh, they're going to be welded together in some form, uh, members of a frame or something. And I've got a nice trim around here. And I want to unroll this one. So again, I will use my shortcut Actually, I'll show you just in case you've forgotten. It's down here, Analysis Tools, Flatten Surfaces. I pick the faces that I want to flatten. And in this case, I'm going to add a rip. So a rip is an edge on those set of faces uh, that can obviously be ripped. Uh, I'm going to use the origin down here and then flatten. And you can see here now this is the unrolled portion that must be uh, applied um, if, we, if we want to roll this thing up again. Right, so that's a, it's another couple of things there. Uh, last couple of examples. Um, here is part of a football or a soccer ball, depending on which part of the world you're in. And, you know, I could do much more of it. It's actually a fun one to do, but I'll save that for another day. Um, flattening this, again, it's pretty simple. You pick the faces that you want to flatten and then flatten. And you can see here, we have a nice shape. But I'm going to turn on the distortion now, and you'll see that there's quite a lot of distortion in these red corners. Uh, if you just turn that up a little bit more. Yep, there we go. So again, 
the flat sheet. Imagine this as a piece of paper or material that's cut to this shape. And I'm going to try and apply it to this original geometry. In order for this to, to fit onto here, I'm actually going to have to crinkle it in and compress the material um, in those corners. And it's going to stretch where this sort of light blue area is. Now, that might not be appropriate for the material. And we'll come back to materials in a second because everybody's going to ask this. But it might not be appropriate. So you might need to add these rips again. So back to the original geometry, we can add a bunch of rips. These are like seams or darts or, or splices or whatever. You want to call them in here. Uh, okay, so let's call them rips. And let's flatten it. And you'll see now two things. The new shape of the flat is nice. It's got these uh, allowances here and rips. And also you see that the amount of distortion went down tremendously. Uh, so you're going to have a lot more success in trying to cover this with this, this flat <laughs> in, uh, compared to the one that was here before. All right. Now, a note on materials, uh, of course. This is not asking you for what sort of material is being uh, applied here or flattened here, and that is deliberate. You know, this is a geometric operation, um, and we are minimizing the strain energy in the solution. Um, you have to use some engineering judgment as to whether the material you've got is going to be appropriate for the kind of flattening situation. Um, coming back to the, the fender and putting some paint protection film on this, uh, typically that film has quite a bit of or some amount of stretch in it. So if you do have a small amount of distortion, uh, that is going to be accommodated by the stretch in the material. Um, something like this, there is no distortion, so we could literally take a, a sheet of metal and roll it up into this shape. Um, the balsa wood is going to be have enough allowance in it to be able to, uh, to accommodate the flattening uh, that we saw here. And uh, let's go back here. So if I cut this shape, it's going to have the right surface area. It's going to be able to be bent onto uh, the mold or however I want to pin this together. Um, for very, very complicated things, uh, maybe more like the, the football, depending on the material um, we wanted to cover this with, or perhaps this is the birthday present and we're going to wrap it up um, for somebody. Uh, we would, if we were using paper, obviously paper doesn't like to stretch. Uh, and so if we did try and stretch it, we would be ripping it. Um, paper does like to fold, though. Uh, so you could have a look at this one um, that we did before. Uh, let's uh, just choose it all again and flatten um, and put the distortion back on. So, you know, paper is going to like and not mind um, being folded up and crinkled uh, in those uh, in the corners here. Um, if that originally was your the, the shape of the paper that you're going to put on there. So depending on whether it is, you know, some kind of pl compliant or flexible, um, pliable plastic or a material like a lycra that's got a lot of stretch in it um, or something that's inflexible <laughs> like paper, um, you need to use the results that we provide you here uh, with um, some engineering judgment. This is no different than any other system that offers this kind of surface flattening um, for the geometry flattening. Uh, last example here is a nice one because this is actually coming in from a GLTF file. So it's a mesh. There is no geometry other than the mesh. Uh, but the surface flattening will work with this, uh, this type of uh, input as well. So perhaps you had scanned something and that you again, you want to put a decal or some paint protection film or stickers or paint masking or something where you want to apply to this uh, mesh, um, then you can take your scan, as long as it's clean, uh, you can use some different tools to clean up the mesh and then do your flattening in here. And again, you could show the distortion or the checkerboard um, appropriately with different scales like this. Uh, and of course, as well, you know, I could export that mesh flattened result in an SVG or a parasolid or, or whatever format I like, maybe parasolid, um, then, you know, I'd use the standard way to um, import these things back in.
and now I have my flattened piece of material. Now this is actually a piece of geometry now um, and so I could do a great number of things to it including thicken it, um, build from it, um, make a drawing of it, uh, do all sorts of things and um, you know all that started with this mesh here. So pretty exciting stuff, um, surface flattening in Onshape um, coming in, well it's come out on November 22nd, here we are.